Blog Talk Radio. And in those days, there were giants in the land, and the sons of the angels of God looked upon the daughters of men and found them fair, and took of them wives, and their sons became of old great men of renown. So they have been mixing with us on a genetic level since the time of Enoch and Ezekiel's will. Here on Earth, we're intrigued by the sun, moon, and stars, and imagine there's got to be planets like ours. So conceive of a face on the surface of Mars, so in need of a meeting and purpose, we thought that indeed they believed that they might be our gods, or that maybe with time we'll do right and evolve, and eventually reach what they seek, and then solve all the problems of man, but they really don't know that they fall in the works of our hands, all but just filthy rags, so we travel the lands to dig up our past, time our lapses, and with it are much of the facts I'm imagine that God came in alien crap They react in this way They're so desperate for meaning and purpose But satanic service They know that they have evil motives Am I making you nervous? Ha! I'm just scratching the surface Aside from Ezekiel's will When the skies unfold like scrolls And the breaking of seals He's the warning The message is clear He's the warning the time draws near, see the lines from Ezekiel's wheel, when the skies unfold like scrolls and the breaking of seals, he's a warning, the message is clear, he's a warning, the time draws near, in the blink of an eye, all believers will be raptured, anyone left receives a mark of their caption, this leader will arise, claim his origins are alien, possessed by Satan on the side of the Nephilim, profess those who left, held us back from evolving, and now that they're gone, we'll solve all of our problems, the worship of anyone, God will be halted, when I'm all into God, then I shall be exalted, I'll lay on these lines, and in time I'll devise, and arrive at a plan that will help him in time, all the ones left behind, the spiritually blind, he's soul in their souls, now we see in their minds, it's already started, we're seeing the signs, just study the word prophecies all the line, that chop off the heads of all those who fight at one earth, one world, aren't you excited? Lines from Ezekiel's wheel, when the skies unfold like scrolls and the breaking of seals, he's a warning, the message is clear, he's a warning, the time draws near, see the signs from Ezekiel's wheel, when the skies unfold like scrolls and the breaking of seals, he's a warning, the message is clear, he's a warning, the time draws near. Hello, readers, listeners, and viewers. This is Ben Garcia with FallenAngels.tv. It's March 20th, 2009, the first day of spring, and it's uh, glorious out here in Athens, Georgia. We're streaming live from the East Coast. I have today uh, with me uh, Luca Scantamberlo, a freelance journalist and uh, author from Italy, and he is the one that was instrumental and bringing us the Apollo story and, and covering in more detail the videos that were released by William Rutledge on YouTube and other sites like Rever.com, and it has caused quite a stir. Uh, I myself, upon finding and viewing the videos, tried to get in contact with the, the leakers of the videos, but was unsuccessful in ascertaining that contact. But our guest today, Luca Scantamberlo, has actually uh, interviewed over general messages through a YouTube account, uh, William Rutledge, and another person who is as yet remains anonymous, a Commander 19. Luca Scantamberlo, thank you for joining us, and can you tell us a little bit about yourself and give us an introduction on yourself, sir? Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, Zay. Good evening to all your listeners. A good evening to everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to stay with you and to say a few words about my experience, about what I have understood and what I can remember, because this is a big story. And, uh, you know, I am not uh, the owner of the truth. I got uh, some little pieces of a big puzzle. Uh, it costed me a lot of pain and and. It was very difficult for me to try to break the wall of the mass media silence. And I got the attention from, for example, 
the Kenny Smith Show in the United States, in Phoenix, in Arizona, uh, even mm-hmm. Bob Kivia. I think he works for the Fox, the network, the TV network Fox. But mm-hmm. uh, he he had a a conversation, a phone conversation with uh, Kevin Smith, and they talked a lot about uh, what I did uh, and about the interview with William Rutledge, the alleged, uh, the presumed uh, commander of the Apollo 20 mission, which officially never occurred. Because the last Apollo mission is not the Apollo 17, which took place in December 1972, if I remember. It was the last mission, the moon, for a crew. But it was the Apollo 18, and you can find some reference on NASA document online. And the Apollo 18 was part of a joint mission. It was a rendezvous in orbit between the Soyuz 19 capsule, a Soviet capsule, and the Apollo 18, the American capsule. And there was the historical meeting in the space between the two uh, astro, the two crews, the American crew and the Soviet crew. So uh, Apollo 19 and Apollo 20 officially never occurred, and uh, they were uh, cancelled missions uh, because of uh, problems of budget. But we are talking about some classified missions. According to our sources, one is William Rutledge, and on YouTube, uh, his uh, YouTube uh, nickname was and is still now retired AFB, retired AFB. And the other source of information, another whistleblower, is Moonwalker 1966 Delta on YouTube, and you. You told the, the general public before that he is anonymous. Yes, but uh, I know his name. I know right. his, his name, but uh, uh, for the moment, you know, uh, I, I don't. I don't want to disclose the name because it doesn't make sense. First of all, because I have to protect his identity, and uh, even I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he is the guy he told me he is. But I had some clues that uh, he, he is a sincere person. And uh, I can give you later on, during our conversation, some details about uh, what I have understood. Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, before we go into this story, and I, I agree with you, it is an astounding story, it needs to be told, the world needs to be made aware of it. But before we go into the Apollo 19 and 20 missions, I'm asking you, do you think that those missions were classified and made covert because of the target and what they were going up there to do, Um, that being uh, locating and landing near and exploring this so-called cigar-shaped alien spacecraft on the dark side of the moon? What I strong, strongly believe, what I am convinced, convinced, it is that uh, if uh, there are evidence in the solar system of extraterrestrial artifacts, everybody mu- must remember what uh, the Brookings Institution uh, made uh, during the last century, uh, in the 60 years of the last century, uh, at the House of Representatives, uh, at, the, at the U.S. Congress, there was a, a relation report by the Brookings Institute, Institution, sorry, and inside the Brookings Institution report, there was written clearly that uh, many scientists, we are talking about, you know, science scientists of uh, uh, from many many fields of uh, of uh, knowledge mm-hmm. anthropologists uh, people uh, experts in sociology uh, you know it was a think tank and uh, they made this report for nasa and the report uh, 
did uh, made some recommendations, you know, for NASA. And NASA was born 1958 during the Eisenhower administration. The recommendation. Do you know the name? Very, the name of that uh, report. The name of the report. Uh, let me remember. Just just a moment. Okay, sure. I have a piece of paper here with me, so. Okay. Let me just also cite to the The name was Proposed Studies on the Implications of Peaceful Activities for Human Affairs. Inside the report, then, there was written that in, in case of finding any kind of evidence of extraterrestrial artifacts in the solar system, the recommendation was uh, the possibility to withdraw from the public the existence of this artifact. This is an official document. So and if the there is an evidence on the far side of the moon of, uh, you know, a big uh, spacecraft made by someone else, it's obvious to follow the recommendation made by the Brookings Institution during the 60 years of the last century. Which is to cover it up and to hide it from the public. Yeah, but the goal was very simple, to avoid the, the, the social disorder, to avoid right. uh, any kind of problem. I can read a few passages so we can understand better. Inside sure. the document, there is written, Anthropological files contain many examples of societies, sure of their place in the universe, which have disintegrated when they had to associate with previously unfamiliar societies, exposing different ideas and different life ways. Others that survived such an experience usually did so by paying the price of changes in values, and attitudes, and behavior. So the first, uh, the first point was to avoid any kind of problem. Right. Uh, it, is, it is obvious that uh, an agenda of cover-up uh, mm -hmm. started because of the recommendation made by a group of scientists, you know, very important. Right. It is uh, an official document presented at the U.S. Congress in the United States. Right. And so it's it's been part of our legacy as our culture and as our government guides the affairs of the world to basically hide the truth from the people. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, I remember Barry Goldwater, uh, he was a candidate for the presidential elections in the United States. He wanted to become a president of the United States. He was one of your senators, and uh, he wrote a letter many years ago, I remember, maybe it was in 1975, and in the letter he wrote that he knew that there was also not only an agenda of cover-up, but at the same time, you know, the people at the highest levels who had, you know, uh, who had the need to know, but at the same right. time they were uh, they were creating, they were elaborating an agenda for a disclosure to help the people. So mm -hmm. at the same time, you have uh, an agenda of cover-up and an agenda of disclosure, what we can call public acclimation program. Right. So the, the problem is, are we facing, we are talking about you know, the Apollo 19, the Apollo 20 mm -hmm. missions, are they part of this public acclimation program? Uh, or right, and the release of these videos. videos. So I, I'm convinced that they are part of it because there are some evidence that uh, nobody can deny. For example, there are NASA pictures, many of them, and they are official, and all of them indicate some anomalies on the far side of the moon. And between them, there is the cigar-shaped object, uh, which uh, was uh, 
pointed out by William Rapley. So we 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 have we have a story in which we have contradictions, we have contamination because not all the footage material is authentic. Right. And we're gonna talk about that, that as well. Yes. And by the same time, you have something that uh, has a value. And I am very, you know, disappointed because uh, even before that uh, someone on YouTube found out that there was a contamination and there was a fake among all the videos uploaded on YouTube, even before, there was not a single newspaper, not a single, you know, journalist far away from the ufological community uh, who wrote a single uh, word on this subject. So the, 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 this story was completely, how do you say in English? Uh, nobody paid attention to the story, you know. And talking ignored. About, yes, ignored. Uh, I'm talking about the big media. Right. Well, let's, uh, uh, it, it doesn't make sense because you have, you know, <laughs> Of official NASA pictures with an outstanding anomaly. Another right. thing that I don't understand. Do, do, you, do you know Richard Oakland? Thanks. Um, no, not personally, but yes, I do know. Yeah, you know, you know his name. You know, he's very famous. Right. So mm -hmm. Richard Oakland was uh, responsible for the media, uh, the, the media and the, the the relationship among NASA and public during the 70s, if I remember. Now, he is not a scientist, but he is a, a scientific journalist. We, we can call, call him like this. And he knows about the story, about the Apollo 19 and 20, because of Paula Harris, who lives in the United States, had an interview with him. And she asked him, something about the story really? and uh, yes Richard Ongland said a few words about the story but <laughs> I was very surprised because <laughs> he didn't say anything about the figure shaped object so for a few minutes you know they talk a lot about uh, NASA secret codes uh, and uh, secret groups inside NASA but Richard Oakland didn't say anything about what he thinks about the anomaly. And this is amazing because Richard Oakland did an outstanding job in exploring, you know, the anomalies in Adonia. the solar system, right. on Mars, on the moon. Right. So I don't understand, really. I don't understand. Maybe this story is too big. Sorry? What 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 did Richard say, Luca? I mean, as far as oh, he said, he made I a comment. Don't, I don't remember the exact words in the interview, but I remember that Paula Harris and Richard Oakland uh, talk, talked a lot together about uh, the space exploration, the secrets of space exploration, and what the Apollo 19 and 20 story uh, could mean. But the result of the conversation is not about the the anomaly on the moon. This is the point, you know, that I don't uh -huh. I don't understand. Well, let's uh let's go into the story, Luca. Can you tell us about the Apollo 19 and 20 missions? Because for those listeners and viewers who are new to this story, who don't know about what the cigar-shaped craft or the Moon City, or the other two in, other triangular ships that are not familiar with your articles, can you give us a, a brief summary of the Apollo 19 and 20 missions? I will try to do my best, but uh, you you have to forgive me, and uh, I apologize with the public if my English is not enough good, if, if uh, my English is not very well, you know, so first of all, I want to apologize. So uh, I will try to sum summarize the story. I had uh, the honor, I think, to to have two interviews. The first one was at the end of May 2007, and, and uh, 
I had an interview with the, the whistleblower who on YouTube uploaded many videos about a classified mission, Apollo 20. And later on, he revealed to me that uh, he is William Rutledge, a test pilot employed by the United States Air Force. And uh, he was a test pilot, and he, he was chosen by the United States Air Force to participate to this classified mission in collaboration with the Soviet. Because first, the Soviet in 1966, and he didn't know how they could uh, get the information. They found out on the far side of the moon, which is not visible from here, from the Earth, and they found out uh, the evidence of a big uh, spaceship. We are talking about, uh, now I can say this, uh, for more than four kilometers long, uh, a derelict spacecraft, you know, covered with dust. And then even because of the Apollo 15 and Apollo 17 pictures, taken during at the beginning of the 70 years of the last century, even NASA was able to get evidence, photographic evidence. So they decided to go to the moon together, but uh, without knowledge you know, from the public. And it was a joint mission, uh, three people, three astronauts, uh, before Apollo 20, there was the Apollo 19 mission, and uh, it was uh, a dramatic failure. William Rutledge told me that uh, all the astronauts died. And another whistleblower who came out uh, last year, and uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2008, I had uh, the honor to interview him. He told me that uh, it is not correct. It is true that they had an accident in space at the end of, of the TLI, the translunar injection, but they survived, and he is one of them. This is what he told me. And as a matter of fact, on YouTube, uh, he uploaded some videos some of them are the same videos, uh, just one of them, if I remember, is the same video already uploaded by retired AFB, uh, which means uh, William Rutledge, and it is the test Snyder ingress, if I remember. So you can see a couple of astronauts, they are going inside inside into a capsule, and there are some technicians. One of them is a NASA technician. It looks like a NASA technician. And the other two guys look like uh, Rockwell technicians, because of on the white overall on the back, there is the Rockwell logo. So Rockwell, the North America Rockwell and the Rockwell International was a big uh, firm, a big corporation, which worked for the Department of Defense and NASA. And for example, if I remember, for NASA built the second stage of Saturn V, Saturn V, and also mm -hmm. they built the command and service modules, not the lunar and discursion module, which was built by Grumman aircraft, the Grammar, but the CSM, you know, the Command and Service Module. So we mm -hmm. have a, a footage uploaded by William Rutledge and, our, and the same footage uploaded by Moonwalk in 1966 Delta, who is the second whistleblower of this story. But other footages were uploaded uh, a few months ago, and the last one was uplo uploaded uh, if I remember, uh, just uh, a few months ago. It is the Apollo 19 incident, which would be the, the, the evidence that uh, the, 
there was an incident in, in space. Uh, you can hear on YouTube a dramatic dialogue. But what it is amazing to me, again, it is that only 2,000 people watched the footage. And among all the footage, this is what I believe the most important. Because you cannot debunk it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. We are living in an era in which fiction and reality, you know, are very close. The border, right. it's difficult to find the border between fiction and reality because of the level of technology, you know? Right, you can, the Hollywood it, and all that. Yeah, and not only Hollywood, because now we have a technology to do something very close to magic. But right. I'm sure at the same time that... Uh, a footage like like that that everybody can can see on YouTube. Uh, just you have to look for on YouTube on the search engine Moonwalker 1966 Delta, and you will find the Apollo 19 incident. You can hear a dramatic dialogue, and uh, the people who are talking are, I think, uh, absolutely are. American born citizens because of their accent. And they are talking about an incident in space. And they have a technical, you know, very specific language. And not a single researcher uh, on, this, on, on internet wrote anything. Uh, nobody spent a single word on it. So mm -hmm. uh, the problem and this is. Could be. The people, well, gonna... the people want the truth, but when they have the truth, they don't have the eyes or the patience or the time to watch and to face the truth. Right. Or the will to search it out completely. Yeah, um, I, right. one, of the things, one of the things that I found fascinating about this story, because I, like you, I wanted to do research into it. And when I found out about it, I was fascinated with the concept and with the possibility. So I wanted to know as much as I could about it, and that was actually when I came up with your articles and with all the okay. research that you yourself had done. Uh, okay. But one of the things – well, let me finish this thought real quick. Uh, yeah, one sorry. of the things that I found fascinating was the fact that there were previous photos from the Apollo 15 and 17 missions, which uh, showed this cigar-shaped craft on the backside of the moon. And so we have previous missions also, which confirm the possibility of this craft being on the dark side of the moon. Yes, and uh, the first uh, indication came from William Raplett, the the main source of information, because he was the man who points out who underlines the presence of those pictures at the Lunar and Planetary Institute website because right. nobody knew anything about those pictures. And they were available. They were in the public domain even before William Rutledge came out with this fascinating story in April 2007. And the Lunar Planetary Institute in Houston is uh, directed by Universities Space Research Association. And it is an institution recognized by National Academy of Sciences. So we are talking about uh, official documents by NASA, hosted by a very important institution. And nobody can deny the presence of those pictures or their, you know, reality, because they are official NASA documents. Of right. course, somebody could say, ah, it looks like a mountain. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the problem is that close to this so-called strange cigar-shaped mountain, there is a very strange anomaly, another one, which is a triangle, you know, object. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, we have two anomalies in the same zone, 
on the far side of the moon, which is not a coincidence, according to me. But another thing that I want to point out with you, Zeng, is about the footage uploaded on Rever.com, in which we can see an astronaut or somebody who looks like an astronaut, which is playing with the camera. I don't know if you remember, there is a strange creature, and William yeah. Rutledge called this creature, you know, uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, yes. It is a nickname, you know, of course. And uh, he told me that they brought the creature who was not dead, not alive, you know, like in a right. dead zone, you know. Animated space, state. Yes. They, they brought the creature on board the land. So on rever.com, you have a footage and you can see the creature on a hammock on board the land. Somebody on the internet wrote that it is not an authentic footage because uh, there is uh, there is gravity inside the land. I don't know if you read something about like this. The problem is this one. The people <laughs> maybe don't know that inside the land, the astronauts have a special shoes. Did you know this, Zane? I made a research. I found out that the astronauts, the Apollo astronauts, had special shoes and their name was Velcro shoes. I found a document written by Donald Slayton, who was a very famous American astronaut. It is a memorandum, and the memorandum is called LEM Zero Gravity Support and Restraint Evaluation. The date is February 1st, 1965, and there is written, Velcro shoes that would be used together with Velcro peel carpeting on the cabin floor of the spacecraft. So we have a strong evidence that when you take a, a shooting with a camera inside the lab, you don't see, you know, the astronauts on the moon like in zero gravity because mm -hmm. they fall to, you know, to have a system to restrain the astronauts on the ground. And the people so don't know this. Can, right, so they can move and stuff. So the fact Inside that... The capsule. Yes, they have to walk, but not like in zero gravity. Right. So th this is a strong evidence. Another evidence that I found, I don't know if you know the name of Oriana Falacci. Have you ever heard about her? She was no. a very famous Italian journalist who lived in New York City. She wrote, she wrote many books about the Vietnam War, about the wars everywhere. She was a reporter. And she died a few years ago. She was a great journalist. And she wrote a book that I suggest you to read. And you can find it in English. The title is If the Sun Dies. And she wrote this book because she was hosted by NASA during the 60 years of the last century. At the end of the book, there is a, a, one chapter dedicated to her visit inside, you know, a Grumman facility in Long Island in Manhattan. And when she is inside a lamb, a true lamb, we are talking about, you know, a true lamb, there is a technician. Inside the book, you can find the explanation of the Velcro shoes. Uh huh. And how they use so, that inside the module, so that you said it was yes. Velcro, and Velcro so they shoes have Velcro the boots the, inside the lamb. So to be able to if move you around. watch the foot, yes, if you watch the footage, there is uh, this uh, presumed astronaut, and it it looks like you know, very very fixed to the floor, which makes sense. Mm hmm. Uh, let me uh, reiterate real quick, Luca, for the listeners and viewers uh, that are not familiar with William Rutledge or the video, because William Rutledge uploaded video of the Apollo 20 flyover across the lunar surface 
to actually land. And in that vid uh, video, it has footage of the flyover of this alien craft and then how the camera focuses on the craft, shows different aspects of it, and how they're talking about the coordinates, where the craft is located, and different things that they see. Like they say they see the landing gear and a bunch of gold metal parts and how uh, the ship itself is pockmarked with meteors and asteroid impacts, and it looks like it's they say it looks like it's been there for billions of years. And so, yeah, which, uh, if you... Which is, yes, uh, sorry if I interrupt you. About the billion of years, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Moon work in 1966 Delta, you know, had a, a contact with one of my sources, and he explained to him that there was a misunderstanding between mission control and this is what I have understood, you know, and the crew. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if the cigar shaped object is authentic, if I, I have, uh, you know, many, many clues, but, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, I can be wrong, you know. I don't want to say I am right, uh, everybody else does not understand. But if it is an authentic spacecraft, it is likely that the spacecraft is a million of years old and not billion of years old. Because, for example, you have to think about the Earth has an age of 4.5 billion of years. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, you know, we cannot uh, say that there is, it is not possible to have artifacts of uh, 1.5 billion. No, it could right. be. You know. but right. maybe even it, even. It like... Yes. Well, I was going to say, Luca. That even even if it's only 3,000 years old, that's still older than anything that we could have put up there. It, it wasn't done by humanity. Uh, oh, we have oh. all the Sumerian legends that talk about. Uh, the fallen angels and how they had populated uh, Mars in, with previous civilizations and how they used the moon as a wayward station to move gold to their yes. planet, the Nibiru. Yes. And so we have all the like gold lessons. Yeah. Yes, because on the moon you have uh, less gravity, so it is, uh, it is simple, you know, to... To put into orbit a weight because uh, if the gravity is lower, you know, you spend uh, less fuel, so it's cheaper. It's uh, simple. Even using Mars as outpost because uh, the mass of Mars is less than the Earth mass. It it makes sense, but at the end of the interview. William Ratledge, the presumed Apollo 20 commander, told me something about economics. I don't know if you remember. Do you um, remember that? Re remind me of this. I, I, will, I will read for you the last answer that he gave to me. So okay. we can comment together. Because I think it's very important. Please. While uh, Luca so is the, looking for the answer the... was the, the following. Okay. Uh, there is a question you did ask for, and I'm always surprised that nobody does. This could be your question. I put the number 27. He, he put another number because he made a mistake, but you know, the interview was an adaptation that I created because when you you use the general YouTube general message to create an interview, it is very difficult because if your message is too long, YouTube general messages cut you know cut the message in right. several pieces. So I had you know to to compose a big uh, a big uh, 
collage, a big puzzle. So the answer was, why it is necessary to hide the UFOs? Why this information? Why put all this under the carpet? It's a question of economics. All currencies on Earth are based on the value of gold. Not many citizens know that gold is an extraterrestrial metal coming from the death of a star. Mm -hmm. The star is dying, its mass is growing, atoms are compressed, and when the star explodes, it spreads large amounts of gold in young solar systems. That's why gold is not a mineral to treat, but a perfect carbon-free metal. This means that it is the most common substance in the universe, no more value uh -huh. than a piece of plastic. That's right. enough to put down all world currencies. Imagine also that the neighbor next to terrestrial biology, bio, extraterrestrial biology entity, if I may, says coffee has a good state, sorry, coffee has a good taste rare in this galaxy. The only perspective of trading coffee through universe would displace the economic power to countries of the South in one day. You see, not a problem of panic, but simply a problem of economy. This is the end of the interview with William Rutledge. If you are, if you, if you are thinking, if you think about what it is going on now in the world, you realize that what William Rutledge told me, you know, is, uh, mm -hmm. is very important. And I right. found an article written on a very specific uh, uh, magazine. It was the Journal of Geophysical Research. And uh, it was written by Jeffrey Cargill, uh, who belongs to the U.S. Geological Survey. And it was about the possibility, you know, to get uh, <coughs> metals from asteroids. And uh, I found an essay, an Italian essay, in which there is a comment about this. And the author, which he, who is Nani Riccobono, says that Jeffrey Kager pointed out that there was, you know, the possibility that if we put some outpost, you know, on some asteroid to get metals, we can have, you know, as a result, uh, like a, how do you say in English? Like a, uh, a mining a change effect. No, you have an effect on the economics. Uh -huh. You know, you, you can have a, a problem because you can, you can, you can change the values of metals. Right. So you can have a, you, do you understand what I mean? Right. If you find it, if, if, for example, if you find oil, you know, in a country where oil is not there, you know, mm -hmm. the answer and the, the answer and the need of oil, you know, can change, you know, the price right. of oil can change. So if you have a, a lot of, a great amount of metals and uh, this amount is coming from asteroids, you can have a different economy, you know, but many people right. can lose the job, for example. Mm -hmm. um, well, you, you know what it reminds me of, Luca? Um, the way that diamonds here on this planet are not even a very rare stone. They're only semi-precious stones, but they manage how much is released out into the public so that they can maintain the value of those diamonds, even though they're not very rare. And so you're right. If we did all of a sudden have an abundance of gold with gold being not a very rare metal, especially, you know, on asteroids and other aspects of space, then that could uh, create such abundance here that, you know, those that control the power and the wealth, would not be as powerful and as wealthy. Uh, and yes. that would be one of the reasons why they would want to maintain control of that as well. Um, yes. let, let, let us go back to the Apollo 20 story because I want to cover this in detail. Um, first off, can you tell us 
William Rutledge was the commander of the Apollo 20 mission that landed there on the moon by the cigar-shaped craft. And William Rutledge, in his interview with you, talked about exploring the craft and also of finding the Mona Lisa EBE, which he says had six fingers and six toes, which is uh, something else that ties to the Canaanite bloodline, the bloodline of Goliath uh, in the Bible, the six fingers and six toes. But uh, uh, can you the creature, tell us? Yes. Yeah. Tell us I more about that. I will tell you a little bit more. Uh, what I can remember, the creature was not found inside a cigar-shaped object, according to right. his story and according to the report made by Moonwalker 1966 Delta, the Apollo 19 commander who survived to the incident, Mona Lisa the female creature from another solar system, probably, was found inside a triangular spacecraft close to the cigar-shaped object. And there is no contradiction among uh, the uh, William Rutledge interview and uh, the uh, Apollo 19 commander interview. Of course, you know, if you... (laughs) If you try to read all the story, it is very easy, you know, to make confusion. Because right. the main focus of the Apollo 20 story is not the triangular spacecraft. But even in the interview that uh, William Rutledge granted to me, there is uh, this spacecraft mentioned inside the interview. There is a passage in which William Rutledge told me that they explore the big spacecraft not along all the, you know, all the inside uh, everything. They did. They didn't explore everything. Of course, they didn't have time, and maybe right. it was not scheduled. But the main, the, the what I understood, the missions, the mission, the Apollo 20 mission, but even at the Apollo 19, had uh, several several steps. One of them was to visit the so-called city. And among the footage on YouTube, I want to say, to remember to everybody, to remind to everybody, that the video of the city is a fake. But this is, does not mean that there is not such a structure on the far side of the moon. There are many witnesses, many testimonies of former Air Force and NASA technicians who said something about strange anomalies and strange structures on the moon and especially on the far side of the moon. And the only thing that we can know without uh, doubt is that the video of the city is a fake. Yes. Isn't the audio from a different mission? Uh, isn't the audio um, also like a, they did the yes. the so-called rover that the audio yes. was from a different is, Apollo yes. mission? It comes from the Apollo 15 mission. It is the voice of Charles Peter Corral, if I remember. And the the guy, the first guy, one of the first persons, one of the first people who found out this was Mr. Charles Gilbert Wright, who is an American citizen who was very kind with me. He wrote me a few emails, and he gave me the permission to mention him. So I wrote even something about him. And he found out that the audio that we can hear in one of the footages uploaded by William Rutledge is a conversation among the astronaut Scott, Apollo 15, and Allen. Allen, I think he maybe he is one of the person in charge uh, at the mission control, maybe. So we have you, we have a story with some contamination, some contradiction, but the point is always the same. What is the point? The point is the following. When you have a leak of information about uh, UFOs or extraterrestrials, you have always, you know, always, you have... Uh, a mixture, because 
you have a truth which is contaminated by something that, that which is which is which has you know an historical context but it is a mixture you know so you have an yeah. attempt to confuse but at the same time you know you have some evidence it is oh. a strategy you, you can call it a strategy of confusion there is a famous journalist here in Italy his name is Dr Roberto Pinotti who wrote a lot about this strategy of confusion but if you remember what i told you before before we said a few words about Barry Goldwater, the senator, mm -hmm. the U.S. senator. He wrote in that famous letter that he knew that at the highest level of the American institution, there was an agenda of disclosure. But if you, if you are following an agenda of disclosure, of, of course, at the same time, you have to calm, you know, the situation. And the best solution is to have a leak of information with truth, at the same time, you know, something which is not true, like a, like a fake. But right. you have always to remember, you know, you cannot have a 100% story without mistakes, without contradiction, because uh, this is not the line that they are follow, following. The, the line that they are following, it is the public estimation program. R right. The public estimation program he, is is simple. Uh, you have some evidence, but with contamination. Right. So it creates still that confusion and that dialogue of unbelief. Um, yeah, but we are here to talk, so it means that you know uh, the people uh, can find something. You know, they can think, they can uh, search for the truth. They can have discussions. Let me ask you this, Luca. Have you tried contacting Leonov to get confirmation of this story? The only thing that I can tell you that I know without doubt that Leonov was contacted by someone. I can I cannot tell you who is. I know his name. I know his surname. But uh, I cannot say anything about this. Okay. All right. And we'll, uh, we'll, I know we'll... the answer by Leonov. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll leave that to another time for when you feel comfortable to make further revelations on this story. Um, and, you know, at some other point, whenever you feel comfortable making further revelations on Commander 19 and his testimony, we would certainly be uh, honored to carry that as well. But um, let's continue on. Uh, many astronauts, such as Edgar Mitchell, are now coming forward with official disclosure. Do you yeah, feel... Yeah, is not a coincidence. Think about it. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, for many years, you know, was interested mm -hmm. in, uh, in, the, in the borders of space exploration. He was convinced that we are not alone. But right. last year... You know, with Nick Margerison uh, from Kerrang Radio made uh, those, uh, you know, amazing statements. Maybe it is not a coincidence because Rutledge's story came out in April and May 2007. And one year later, you know, July 2008, Dr. Edgar Mitchell says, you know, to the general public that he knows without doubt that the government knows about the presence of aliens, which is amazing. Right. Maybe yeah. Dr. Edgar Mitchell is following an agenda, like, right. like, for example, Colonel Corso, who died in 1997. I think more and more of the astronauts. As you said, the acclimation program and the official disclosure program both are being accelerated um, to some point. And I, I think a lot has to do with something that you did with Project Camelot um, when you were talking about the return of Nibiru and Planet X. I think that I think because of that return, that uh, official disclosure is coming at an accelerated pace. 
Yeah, and he's saying that. Speak a little are, bit about that. Yes, saying there are two points, you know, touched by William Rutledge in the interview with me. Uh, the interview took place in May 2007. He told me that si since that time, you know, uh, we could have an increase of uh, UFO phenomena. I don't know right. if you remember, but William Rutledge yes, two years ago wrote in the interview, you know, in one of the answers to my questions, that uh, there would have been an increase of UFO, you know, apparitions, UFO sightings, and this is what we are experiencing, what we have, we are having now, at every latitude, you know, in every country. If Absolutely. you give a look to the news, uh, almost in every country there is a sighting uh, almost uh, once a week, you know. Right, It is right. a little bit strange. So William Rutledge was right. Another thing that he said to me, that it is something about Nibiru. Because, first of all, I was very curious because he mentioned to me the, the date of 2012. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say anything about this. So I asked him, but did you mention the date of 2012 because of uh, the return of uh, Planet X? Did you know anything about this? Mm -hmm. So what I understood that he didn't know anything. I mean, maybe he, he has and he had uh, some contact. But he, he, he is not just an insider, you know from the Planet X problem. But uh, uh, I'm sure that he mentioned the date of 2012 because maybe he had some contact, you know, at the highest levels of the government. Right. And this is a problem not just for the U.S. government. This is a problem if there is, you know, uh, if there is a truth behind you know the so called problem of planet X return. It is a problem for everybody, for the Russian uh, Federation, the US oh, government, for the Italy. For Italy, well, just, for Germany, England. Well just what uh the Colburn Bible talks about with the return of the destroyer, um and how it describes, you know, the planet X returning and the chaos and the devastation that it, it will bring to our planet with its return and then if you study revelation uh revelation the the end the return of wormwood is the return of nibiru and then, then it talks about the asteroid impact and how the uh the moon is darkened and the sun is hidden and uh clouds are you know formed from the asteroid impact and it talks about one third of the seas of the creatures in the seas dying and one third of all the ships being destroyed i mean there's Massive devastation that is supposed to come with the return of this planet. Um, but we're going to save that for a, a whole other show, Luca, because I know that will uh, that yeah, will take a whole another hour and a half in itself. Yeah. But continuing exactly. on, yes, yeah, let's continue on with the William Rutledge story. You stated um, that the, the William Rutledge you thought that had contact you initially is not the same William Rutledge that is maybe uploading new videos. Can you explain that a little bit more? The the last contact that I, that I had with uh, William Rutledge, whoever William Rutledge is, was in July 2007. Uh, from that time, I never had again, you know, con any kind of mm -hmm. contact. Uh, from Did my you... point of view, the same person, uh, from my point of view, on Rever.com, there is the same person or, or the same group of people who are leaking information. Mm -hmm. So I think this because uh, there are some dialogues among uh, William Rutledge and I that I didn't make public, and they were about Nibiru. So when he uploaded, you know, on Revel.com some presumed footage of a trajectory, you know, uh, computer graphica, uh, computer graphica video 
to show a possible trajectory of Nibiru inside the solar system right. through the ecliptic plane. I was not surprised. Many people were were surprised, you know. The public was mm-hmm. I read the comments, you know, ah, this guy is talking about Nibiru, but it does make sense, you know. But right. I had I had a di I had a, I had a dialogue, you know, which is not public. And uh, William Rutherford and I talked about Zechariah Sitchi. We talked mm-hmm. about Orbiger. We talked about Velikovsky. So I think the same person, Ver.com, is the same person who was retired AFB on YouTube. Uh-huh. And as a matter of fact, if Mona Lisa footage is a fake, how much money did they spend to realize to such that. an outcome? Standing footage. Absolutely. So, it, it does not make sense, you know, to to waste a lot of money if you are not uh, gaining money back. Right. And, uh, uh, and well, one of the things too that I found fascinating was the fact that you took three different screenshots from the uh, flyover, the Apollo 20 flyover, and how you were able to match that with a lunar map and the topography of the lunar surface with what was shown on the video. Can you explain that a little bit? Every picture that I found, I found, uh, I found on public domain because uh, all the pictures I found, all the details, you know, are coming from official NASA documents. Right. And, and then there are the there is the footage from uh, Wiener Rattlers. Yeah, and it, it seems to match up um, quite well. Look, at, um, you have to remember, you have two 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 kinds of uh, of cameras. You have the Westinghouse, you know, TV camera, right. and then you have the 16 millimeter camera. And there are two different uh, tools, you know. You have the 16 millimeter Maurer data acquisition camera and the Westinghouse color TV camera. You have the footage from the command and service module made by Leona Marietta Snyder at more than 100 kilometers, you know, over the Fermi World Plane. And then mm-hmm. you have the flyover of the lunar module, lunar sculpture module of the LAM, which was the Phoenix module, you know. You have the constellation mm-hmm. mode in orbit and the Phoenix LAM with the two crew, uh, with the two men, you know, of the crew. And yeah. in that particular occasion, the crew was composed by Alex Leonov, according to the William Rutledge story. And William Rutledge himself. But in the video that you can see on Rever.com, you don't see, you don't, you don't have Alexei Leonov. Some people, you know, made comments like this: "Oh, this guy does not look like Alexei Leonov." Of course, but there is not written that he is Alexei Leonov. If that foot is authentic, that man, you know. Do you remember mm-hmm. before, no? He said something about the Velcro shoes, you know? The Velcro shoes right. in charge to keep the astronauts inside the lunar and the scrutial module uh, close, you know, uh, restrained to the surface. Right. If that footage is authentic, that man is William Rutledge, not a uh-huh. Leonardo. Ah. That man is William Rutledge. How can I say this? Of course, the answer is very simple. Because the lunar and excursion model was, you know, a spacecraft for two people, two astronauts. Right. Right. The mission, the mission took place, you know, had a, a crew of three members. One was inside the command service module in orbit, you know, in a parking orbit around the moon mm-hmm. right. for the other astronaut. And the other astronaut, where Alexei Leonov, the Soviet cosmonaut, the hero of the Soviet Union, and William mm-hmm. Rutledge. If that man is not Alexei Leonov, of course, the only 
Uh, the answer is that man is William Rappel. Another Rappel. thing that I want to point out, very important. Do you remember the film Philadelphia by Jonathan Dem with Tom Hanks? Did you uh, see that movie? Say that one more time. Which one? What movie? Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia. Oh, yes, the Philadelphia experiment. About the problem yeah. of uh, AIDS. Do you remember, you know, the, the lawyer, yeah. Tom Hanks, who lost the job because of the illness? Do you remember at the end of the movie, there is a discussion, you know, inside the courtroom uh, between the people in charge to to, have, to find the sentence, you know, the, the civilians, uh, how do you say, the jury, the, the members of the, how do you say in English, I don't remember. The jury, you know. Jury? One of them, yeah, one of them says something like that, you know. I don't understand. If you, if you have, you know, a very expensive aircraft, you know, you have to send this aircraft in a enemy territory, you know, in a difficult mission. Are you going to choose a very, very um, uh, smart pilot? Uh, uh, you, of course, the answer is no. You, you will choose uh, one of your best pilots. Yes. Do you agree with me or no? This is, uh, you know, the short passage from that movie. Now, I'm asking to you then, if you are going to send, you know, some man on the far side of the moon, are you going to choose uh, the best pilot of the world for a difficult mission? Or are you choosing somebody, you know, from uh, uh, the civilian people? Of mm-hmm. course, the answer is simple. The best pilots in the world are from the military. So right. well, what I'm talking about is very simple. William Rutledge, you know, said many times that he was a civilian test pilot. Right. Yes, maybe he was a civilian test pilot, but during, during his life, I'm very convinced he was a military pilot. Right. With the United States Air Force. And I'm sure also that his name is really William Rutledge. But you, maybe, you did some... maybe, yeah, I, I'm giving some clues, you know, to the people to understand right. that they, they have to, to, to watch from different angles, from different points of view, all this story, because otherwise they can miss uh, something. Right, right. Um, do you... Do you think that William Rutledge will release more videos soon? And also, do you have any idea on how much information or how many, how much video footage he has? Uh, I think, I think the the we we can see if you remember on the YouTube. Uh, page of William Rutter on his account, he removed all the videos except one, which is a sort of a summary video of the story. I don't know if you, if you didn't, didn't give a look in the last weeks. If you, if you look up the YouTube, if you search for retired AFB on YouTube, you will find his account, you will find a very old message from him, by him, and uh, he told us that he moved to Revel.com, but there is a video uploaded by him, it is uh, like a trailer. Inside the trailer, you know, there are pieces of different footages, and one of them is not public yet. And it lo- it looks like the internal part of the the spaceship. Ah. Uh-huh. If you watch so it- carefully, if you watch carefully that movie, you can realize that it appears, you know, like a sort of trailer uh-huh. of something that we we can see in the future. The problem yeah. is that. Uh, what was the answer from the mass media to the story? And the answer is very simple. Uh, if you if you exclude, you know, if we we don't consider the Kevin Smith show, who which covered the story 
in October 2007, and the Bob Kiviat comment, the the answer from the mass media world was a, an absolutely an absolute silence. Right. So I think that William Ratley, the moon worker 1966 Delta, are waiting for an answer. Maybe not from the public, maybe not from the mass media, but from the government. But not mm-hmm. just from the U.S. government, because this is an international issue. If there are some clues, you know, of reality, if there is uh, something of true in this story, you know, this story is beyond the borders, beyond the national borders. And not only because uh, we are talking about classified mission, you know, uh, among Soviet Union, United States of America, and maybe even with the collaboration of the United Kingdom and France, maybe. We are talking about a problem with the influence of science, influence of a way of life, influence of academic knowledge. You know, this is a, an international problem. Absolutely. So, you know, that, that I, actually brings in Go ahead, Lucas. Go ahead. Yeah, the problem is William Rutledge, whoever William Rutledge is, and Moonwalk 1966 Delta are waiting for something. But up to now, I, I don't see a strong reaction. The only positive thing that we had in the last month, I think, are the declarations made by some Japanese politicians. All the declar- all these statements made by this Japanese politician were made after the disclosure by William Rutledge. And uh, they were statements on the possibility of extraterrestrial life in the universe. And one of the statements was made by the Minister of the Auto Defense Force of Japan. Wow. So it was covered by Fox, by other networks, and uh, three different politicians in the same week. And you have to remember that Japan, you know, has a, a probe in orbit around right. the moon. That so, they just they just got up there. I, yeah, never mind. I want to ask you a question. Let me ask you this question, Luca. As far as that, have you seen the the video that they have released from this? Uh, probe that the Japanese have put up because supposedly on the video that they released this high definition video of the moon's surface um, somebody has leaked um, some other uh, like zoom in shots of this video that show anomalies and supposedly that that it it even shows some craft on the moon's surface uh, in this Japanese probe high definition video, have you seen that, Luca? I saw I saw some images. I saw I saw the rise of the Earth from the Moon uh, because of the Kaguya probe. I right. didn't I didn't see so far uh, what you are talking about, but I am very convinced that uh, the the Japanese uh, space agency, the JAXA knows everything about the far side of the moon. And uh, I read on the internet that there was a, an internaut, I don't remember his nickname, sorry, I, I apologize with you and with the public, but he wrote on the internet that he had a contact with some members of the Japanese space agency. And the revelation that he made is the following. I don't know if we can trust about this revelation, but I'm, I'm going to tell you. It is the following. In September 2009, maybe there will be a disclosure from the Japanese space agency. Wow. You have to, you know, to, <laughs> to think about that this is a statement made by just a, an internet user, you know? So uh-huh. this is not an official declaration by someone very important. Right, right. <laughs> it's a clue, you know. Uh, 
I think this person well, is sincere. He had uh, some contact with uh, members of Japanese, uh, of the Japanese staff, you know, from the well, if, J- Japan. If they have this probe up there, then they obviously know what what we know. Because it nah, this even was China, supposed to be. Even China. China has another probe. Right. And India. Even, India, too. Yeah, India. Is a, so maybe. Maybe we are facing, you know, a future close to us in which uh, maybe some government uh, will take some uh, steps, you know, towards the disclosure. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Which brings me to another question for you, Luca. Is there anything about this story that you can share with us that the people do not yet know about the Apollo 19 and 20 story? Yes. I'm going to read for you, uh, for the public, what William Rutledge told me about the alien technology. Okay. I I did uh, I did not uh, write anything so far. Uh, I didn't not make public uh, what I reading for you. Okay, it is uh, something that comes from a message. Uh, that I received on my YouTube account close at the end of May. It is the following about technology on triangle ships and about uh, the Roswell crash. Many technology were found. Corso spoke about some of them, but in surprise, he didn't tell more. In 1947, six ships, you know, about fiber optics, minor integrated chips, but other were found. A kind of transparent steel. This was a microperforate metal used in pressure disks, used apparently to establish soft equalization of pressure, and it had a transparent property. Metal with memory of form. After the accident, the next morning, some parts of the craft were regaining the original shape. Clothes computer. This is the only name I can find. There was a computer printed on a large piece of cloth. Then, uh, if you remember, in one of the footage uploaded by Mo- no, by Apollo 20 commander, by William Rutledge, you can see a sort of, uh, you know, cloth computer. I don't know if you remember. Or a com when there is one of the footage, uh, footages about uh, the Ebbe Mona Lisa. Uh-huh. Do you remember? There is a close-up of something very similar to a cloud, but it looks like a cloud computer. Uh-huh. A okay, cloud I do computer. remember. You can have a look when you have time. Like a clock. Okay. You... Yeah, a cloud, like a suit, you know, by suit with... Right, fabric. Chip. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, cloud computer. This is the only name I can find. Okay. Wow. There was a computer printed on a large piece of cloth. Fibers were made with different kind of metal connected. It was metal fibers with gradient of property. The memory blocks were lines of fiber silicon with prion. The internal clock was made with polonium. It, it, it seems to the engineers that the computer was not analogic, not binary, but had symbolic processors. This means instead of comparing this is equal to that, the answer could be this is the symbol of that. This is the founding on artifice intelligence. What was amazing was to deploy the piece, this piece of computer and a microscope. It's a marvel to see, to see silver, gold, silicon, other materials connected together. Can you hear me, Zen? Yes, yes. Yes. I'm with listening the last, with uh, utmost interest. Yes. I have the last sentence about the propulsion. The propulsion. I'm not sure if uh, William Rutledge in this uh, answer to me is talking about the spacecraft on the far side of the moon, on the spacecraft found out by the army uh, during 1947. So I'm not sure. So you're saying. So you're saying that the technology that was found in Roswell is yeah, also he, similar to the technology that was found in this cigar-shaped craft or the triangular craft 
on the uh, I, did, I did not understand uh, what is uh, in what I read for you. I did not understand where is the reference to Roswell and Alamogord, the crash. Where is right. the reference to what they found the moon? However, I will read for you what he told me about propulsion. The propulsion okay. system. The wing right. border is covered with ele electrodes spaced by 10 centimeters who receive 300 volts. The total power of the ship is 30 teslas. The MHD main propulsion is helped by MHD brakes and ionized layer is produced on the surface of the ship from a honeycomb barnament which protects the ship at high speed. The friction against molecules at a high speed is used by the MHD motor to realignment the main motor. But the main information on triangular ships was the massive amount of gold used inside. Wow. So they were collecting gold inside the triangular ships? This is what we can understand. Another thing that he told me is uh, that about the Roswell crash, uh, in those uh, months, you know, there were six ships recovered. Six, not just one. Right. But between Alamogordo and Roswell, six ships. And uh, the reason for that, it was the following. Let me read for you something. Uh, listen, listen to me. Six craft fell on Earth between Alamogordo and Roswell. This is a message by Rapledge from May okay. 2007. Five right. in Alamogordo. All were hit by lightning strikes, I think, or had problems and crashed later. The analyze showed that this aircraft used Ionized plasma around the plane with the power of 30 tesla, tesla diffused by electrodes on the wing, producing 300 volts on the top of the wing. It had been deducted that these ships came from a world, I think, where thunder strikes do not occur. Ah. Uh, hmm. Okay, and I, I give you another piece of revelation, we could call it a revelation. Okay, we appreciate uh, it. Uh, two, two or three persons around the world and uh, myself saw a footage that Rutledge did not make public. Oh, wow. I'm sure I, yes, this is a footage not about uh, extraterrestrials. It's not about, uh, I mean, it's about alien technology, probably, because it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a movie, it's a short, uh, like a documentary, taken probably at Massachusetts Institute of Technology during the 40s years of the last century. And William Rutledge told me that he was going to uh, make public the footage uh, he made the test with me and with the other people. They were friends of him, you know, on YouTube. Mm. Just two, mm -hmm. two of them. I remember two two users, two YouTube users, if I remember. So only three people, including myself, saw this footage. The footage is not available anymore on YouTube because it was removed by William Rutledge if I remember, in June or July 2007. Mm -hmm. It was without audio, it was, uh, so no sound, and uh, you could see in the, in the footage some engineers, you know, they were working on something very similar to a transistor. And uh, William mm -hmm. Rutledge, told me that uh, it was the transfer of technology. It was uh, the attempt, you know, to create the transistors for the first time. Backward engineer, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, back engineer. And uh, he told me also that he was going to 
made public the footage, but he needed to remove the faces of the engineers. Uh -huh. Because in the footage, you could see the face of one of the engineers. So the thing that I can do, this I can do without problem, is to send you a frame from the footage in which the face of the engineer is not visible. This is, I can do it. Okay, that, because, well, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Yes, I will do it because I'm not in the position to <laughs> to give, a, you know, a technical comment on the video because uh, I'm not an expert <laughs> of... Yeah. Uh, Electronics, you know, I can I, I don't know almost anything about this. So maybe somebody could say could say a few words about the frame. Yes, yes. Well, well, we'll ask the listening audience if anybody has any idea. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have technical expertise and understand yeah. not, uh, NASA let, lingo a lot greater okay. than we do. Let, let me let me tell you another thing. And okay. I will quote a statement made by Rutledge uh, All right. on those days of May 2007 about this footage. So I have a movie depicting the transfer of transistor to integrate circuits for building memory block for the Apollo AGC computer. AGC means Apollo Guidance Computer. Uh -huh. So this could explain the you know the great uh, supremacy of the U.S. Uh, of the U.S. Uh, government of the NASA and uh, of the U.S. Air yes, Force. Space shuttle program. Yes. Yes. Everything. Yeah. No, no, not only the space shuttle. Even before, because the first uh, space agency to use a computer, you know. Uh, right, Norbert, NASA altogether. It was NASA with Gemini. Uh huh. So, because uh, the 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 Soviet uh, space agency had another point of view, you know, they uh -huh. used to send uh, into space uh, military men and women, but uh, even without uh, knowledge, uh, you know, of. Uh, the, the the classical knowledge of a pilot, you know. Mm -hmm. NASA had another policy. Every astronaut, it doesn't matter man or woman, must and had to have in the past a, a very important and specific knowledge as pilot. Mm -hmm. This is the so they could do the craft. So yes. are you saying that you think that the computer and computer technology was back engineered from those crafts? A lot of help came from that. This is what I understood. Yes. If you read carefully the interview with Moonwalk in 1966 Delta, yes. one of the first answers, he says, he says clearly this. That uh, ah. the alien technology. If you if you read once again the interview, the alien technology and the knowledge of the alien technology was part of the space program. Of course, we're right. talking about classified space program. Absolutely, uh, Luca. We've got two minutes left. Um, I, I want to thank you and honor you for what you're doing um, and, and sharing your story with the world. And I want to ask all the listeners and viewers to please. Pray for Luca and his family and for the protection of his family. And I ask the Lord and uh, Yeshua, Savior, Messiah, to bless you and all that you're doing and enable you to get this story out there and to bring the truth to, to this. And uh, we look forward to further revelations from you. Uh, in, in closing, I want to ask you, if this story were true, what do you think it means for humanity as a whole? And we've got six, 60 seconds. <laughs> it's a difficult answer. Uh, In one minute, right? <laughs> the only thing that I can say, uh, first of all, I thank you very much for everything you are doing to help the people to to have, uh, you know, an op a very an open mind. You know, it's very yeah. important. And the only seconds. thing that the only thing that I want to say to everybody is. Uh, do your homeworks. 
Do your yeah. homework. Try to understand by yourself, you know. Uh, don't trust anybody. Trust just what you are able to understand by yourself. This is what uh, I can suggest. Absolutely. And on that note, I want to thank you again, Luca, and we look forward to talking to you again real soon. And to the listening audience, um, we will be talking to you real soon as well, and I'll put Luca's uh, information and website information on the links to this show. And we'll talk to you real soon again, Luca. Thank you so much, and God bless. Thank you, Tang. It was a pleasure. Goodbye. Bye-bye.